using the gear puller to remove the driver from the engine, we just place this on either side of the wheel so that these tips here underneath the flange, as you can see in this picture here, and tighten down the center part. And then using this Allen wrench, just tightening down on the gear puller, or on the wheel puller I should say, it will slowly pull the wheel off. And here we have the wheel separated from the axle on the locomotive. Now should you have to replace one of the insulators because they're cracked, like some of these here are broken and, and split, the way to do that would be to take a 35 millimeter film container, place the wheel inside of here, and then give it a couple of taps with a hammer and drive the center part out so that you have all three parts of the wheel. In this case here we have a a, a flangeless driver. There's the, the, the rim and here's the insert and then this obviously would be the, the plastic part. And they fit together like this. Wheel, insulator, then the center part or core of the wheel. Next part would we'll be putting these wheels back together and then using a quartering tool to put all the wheels back together on the chassis in the proper uh, positions so that the binding, uh, so there is no binding with the uh, valve gear. And here we are going to disassemble one of the wheels that has to have one of the insulators replaced. As you can see I've taken the wheel and placed it inside of a 35 millimeter film can. A little bit of a tap there. And it's separated from the flange and the, the white insulator is still on the, the center part of the wheel so that'll press itself right off. Or worst case scenario since it's probably damaged or discolored you can just cut it off with a, a utility knife. And then we'll reinstall those uh, using the uh, new white insulators that we have here. And as you can see, they look a, a lot, a lot nicer. Nice bright white there, as opposed to the old yellowed ones from, uh, from years of use. One uh, tip, though, because the reproductions are not the exact same size as the originals, you will have to sand out. And I find it easier if you use a drill mill tool and use a Dremel inside just to kind of uh, sand that down so that the core part does fit inside of the insulator. A uh, little trial and error uh, in fitting there, but uh, it takes a couple minutes. You finally get them to press it. Don't press too tight or you will crack them and you'll wind up having one that uh, looks like, well, don't have a broken one here. I guess I do. You'll have one that breaks open just like that and it'll, uh, it'll be split. So take your time, grind that out so that the pieces fit in there snugly, not real loose, but on the other hand not real tight so that they, uh, it breaks the insulator. Well here are the completed wheels with all the new insulators in there. Uh, sometimes after assembling everything together the outside circumference of the insulator doesn't always fit real snug inside the, uh, the flange of the uh, wheel. Uh, to kind of fix that problem you can use uh, our everyone's uh, favorite elixir here, JB Weld, and smear some of that on the outside circumference and push it together and that'll take up some of the, uh, the slack in there and then let it sit overnight. What we're going to do right now is we're going to be using a quartering tool which is this device here and what it has is three cutouts for the wheels. And then these wheels are attached in there on both sides. The chassis is in between and then using a vise it's all compressed together to put the wheels back in the proper quartering. 
Here we are now inserting the wheels into the quartering jig and they're just held in place. You have to make sure you get the, the round hole on this little peg here that you can see. And then the other hole here is where a screw goes through that lines up with the screw for the linkage. So we're just going to put that in there and get that in position and then get one of these small tiny cap screws that goes on and we'll fasten this all together. Well there's the first wheel in there. We're going to move on now to wheels number two and three. Set of wheels a little easier because you have the stud in there for the uh, eccentric rod. And we just put that in there. Now you can see the chassis and the wheel assembly is all inside the quartering jig and we're going to start to crank down the vise and start to set and press the wheels in place. And it seems as if they're going in place. And looking at the jig, we can see the wheels are all pressed in place now. And we're going to start to take the screws that we put in before, so we can take the jig off of it. And if everything worked okay, the wheels should be properly quartered when we place the side rides on. As you can see, all the wheels are all in place, and all pressed and properly gauged. Everything should be good. We'll now put the side rides on and see what happens. When we put the motor assembly back on and hopefully everything will work good. And now we're just going to put the other connecting rod on and fasten that in with the two hex head connecting rod screws. Run those down there like that. And one more to go and then we'll test everything out and see how smooth everything runs. And everything's put back together and it sure seems to run pretty smooth. As you can see everything's moving nice and smooth there, just under, under hand power. But as you can see everything's moving fine, no binding, and everything's back together and perfectly quartered. Next step now is to put the motor back on and then move on to refinishing the boiler and the tender. And here is the finished product.